this episode of Fail Proof Kitchen. Fail Proof Kitchen, motherfucker. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Derek Whiteup, and I'm Sh Shut Up. Today we're gonna make some delicious Philly cheesesteak ribeye wraps. I don't have knife skills. That's dope, though, man. <laughs> I had a jalapeno incident. Call the peener wiener. I'm, I'm watering at the mouth here. Thanks, Robbie. Let's just look at that. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Yeah, that is damn good. I'm Derek Whiteup. I exercise a lot. I, I compete in CrossFit. I've been a first form athlete since 2015. This is my house. This is my kitchen. Um, happy to be here today. Let's cook. And I'm Chef Robbie Jester. Today we're gonna make some delicious Philly cheesesteak ribeye wraps. So how we're gonna do that, basically, we have a frozen piece of ribeye here. I've already gotten us started in the bowl, but you wanna have the frozen ribeye. You want it to be frozen, but not like frozen solid. So I painstakingly shaved all of this when it was solid frozen so that we could do this in front of you and show you. But you want a ribeye because it's got a good fat content. Good fat is gonna be good flavor. This one in particular, we cut like the big fat, like the eye of the fat and then the tail of, of everything. We cut it off of there. But in this case, we wanna make sure we go ahead and shave it. So you're basically just gonna come in and cut it super thin. Okay. And you can you can use the knife however you want to use it. This I'm much or, or, or the because it's so we thinner than that. Thinner than that. Thinner than that. Oh, dude, you did all this. Oh my gosh. There you go. That was good. And then you can kind of treat it like you're sharpening a pencil a little bit. So like when you start to get too much surface area, you can kind of turn it and get a corner and start from the corner. Like oh okay. Yep. And it's gonna gonna make it easy. Yep. And why? Why so thin? Like it's a painstaking process. Why? How, but it does seem like that looks good. It, it, how does it enhance the bite? So so thin because it's gonna caramelize all those uh, all that surface area is gonna like caramelize in the pan when we cook it, and that caramelization of the protein is what adds flavor, and that's like the difference between like a Philly cheesesteak and like you know, the steakums that we like had as a kid. Yeah. We were talking off camera about that, but like you would just sear like the, the two sides of it and a slice of cheese. But the, the different um, surface area is what's gonna do that. Also gonna make it super tender so we can cook it very quickly. Leaving all this all this fat yeah, here. Yeah, leave it on there. Good to go. Man, boy, yeah, this is a... Uh... It's a process. And if you have like a little home, um, like meat slicer, some of the little countertop guys are like yay big. You can just pop this on the meat slicer and just slice it up and it happens super fast. What we're doing by hand, uh, it's a labor of love. I'm trying to hold the knife right, I want to stab this You're doing motherfucker, good. but yeah. Shaved well enough? Yep, no, you're doing a great job. Thanks, Robbie. Oh, that's something I've never, do you do like this? I've never, I always yep. thought I would mm -hmm. cut my fucking fingers off. You look off. great doing that. Grab shit. You looked probably the most natural doing it just then. Just keep that going. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks, Robbie. That just, dude, like, that's, that looks good, man. That looks like somebody took their time and made that shit. It goes a long way, you know? Whatever this is, is gonna be good. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe the board off a little bit. But in this case, we're cooking everything, so I'm not really worried about the cross-contamination. If it was chicken, I would probably clean the board a little bit, but everything's gonna go in the same place. Everything's gonna get cooked, so we're just gonna roll right through it. So if you wanna just take the roots off the garlic and then just slice the garlic for me. Okay, this is something you're gonna have to teach me. I don't know how to cut garlic. I usually just buy the, do the hack where you buy like minced garlic pieces or something like that. So. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Just like, we call that the ghost of garlic's past. So, sorry, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> so we want, you, we want you to cut your and own I, garlic. I see, so I see you guys do it. Do you smash it? You cut So if I was gonna like chop it, you, mm -hmm. you would smash it first okay. and then chop it up. But uh, for this, we're just gonna slice it. So you're just, actually, fuck the glove. So you're actually just gonna. I don't have knife skills. That's dope though, man. You're just, <laughs> just like the more you do it, right? So like, oh, yeah. so this. Yep, yeah, and just, you're just gonna kind of rock the knife like this, yep. Well, they try to get away from you, huh? Yep, it's tough with the glove. You don't have natural attraction, so. But the glove looks so cool. That's the only reason I, well, I, I started wearing gloves when I, I had a jalapeno incident. <laughs> a jalapeno. You went and touched your pee-pee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I, and then ever since then, I don't know, I just always wear gloves when I cook now. Call it peener wiener. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> so you're gonna cut, um, cut the, the bottom and the top off of that, peel it, and then we're gonna slice it up thin. 
So the reason you're struggling with that is you want to slice with the knife, not just come down. No, so I mean, yeah. that's, that's the... That's Look the at the flick of the wrist. Okay, so it's good. Don't cut me. I'm just going to slice. All the way through? Yep. So we're just, okay, slices. Yep, we're going to do some caramelized onions. So Philly cheesesteak. So like at an angle? Yeah, yeah, you come in at an angle to start with. And then as you come up the onion, you kind of like correct the knife like this. We just want to basically make sure that they're all like the same general thickness. Because we're going to caramelize our onions, we want to make sure that they're uh, you're going to cook at the same time length. So now you're going to just turn it. Yeah. Yep. Boom. Okay. I was I was waiting. I was thinking that, but I was waiting for you to, like, hey, dummy. Okay. Uh, generally, like, if it starts to feel uncomfortable, then that's the, the point in which you want to you want to give it a turn and adjust. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn the the saute pan on like medium high. We're going to get it hot so we can start caramelizing our onions. How'd so, I do? Those aren't, that's not they look bad. Great. They look great. I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Robbie. Okay. Have Let's you see. ever seen Ghost? <laughs> <laughs> Think of the, the, the clay bowl scene, you know? <laughs> like that. Get him, Mike. So we have the saute pan on high heat, or like medium high heat. So we want to go ahead and add in a little bit of olive oil. And we're using uh, the experienced olive oil, not the extra virgin. That's funny. You got virgin and experienced. <laughs> <laughs> extra virgin is super assertive and people like sometimes it's like, in something like this, it's gonna be off-putting because it's not a flavor you would normally associate with this. Okay. So go ahead and throw all of our onions in there. So we're gonna cook these onions. We're gonna get a little bit of color on them. And we're gonna do that. We're not gonna season with any salt before we have some color on there. Cause the salt is gonna pull out moisture. It's actually gonna keep them from caramelizing. It's gonna make them just kind of like, be like wet and gray. Huh. So, but however, we wanna throw in a little bit of black pepper and we're gonna use that garlic. We're just gonna use it later because the garlic is super thin. So we wanna make sure that uh, it's not gonna burn while everything else is cooking. And then let's go in, let's add a little more flavor with a little bit of the onion powder and a little bit of the garlic powder. Just a couple shakes. Yep. So go ahead and give that uh, give that saute pan a shake. Show me show me how to do it in real life. Huh? Okay. So to do the flip, yeah, you shake, you get everything down in the front of the yeah. pan, up and back. Oh fuck! It's gonna just go off and blast in my own face. Let's I want to try it. Boom! That was great. Don't do any more though. Okay. <laughs> So we're gonna kind of leave it there. Now that we've got, now we've got it all in the pan, we're actually gonna turn our heat all the way up to high because we want to caramelize it, but we don't want it to take forever. Mm. We have some nice color on our onions. Now we want to add all of our garlic in and give it a little stir since you know how to toss it up now. Hey, you're doing great. Thanks, Robbie. And what we want to do is that garlic's gonna cook super fast. So we're actually gonna deglaze our pan with a little bit of beer. So grab a little bit of the beer there. And then how do you do this process? You just, just pour it in all so, over? So the safe way, like beer is okay. Yeah. But like if you use anything with higher alcohol content, what you want to do is pull it off. Okay. Pour oh, is this the, where you get the flames? Pour the alcohol in it. You won't get it with beer, okay. but like pour in the beer and then you put the alcohol back on. And look, all that, all that color like deepens in there. And then if you want to sprinkle it now, we can sprinkle with a little bit of salt. And we're going to add just a touch of parsley. And the parsley is there for a little bit of lightness, a little bit of freshness, but also, uh, quite frankly, it's just there to make it look nice. Is that enough? Yep. You don't want too much, right? Nope. Yeah. That's good. So we're going to go ahead and pull the onions out, put them on this plate here. Okay. So you want to go in and spread it in a nice even layer, but don't like overcrowd it. So sprinkle it around. We don't want to agitate it a whole lot. We don't want to move it around a whole lot because all that's going to cool our pan down and it's going to make it just not do what we're doing. We're going through the process of doing it in batches. We don't want to mess it up by moving it around a whole lot and making it cool the pan down. I tend to play with my meat too much. <laughs> Heard that about you. <laughs> yeah. Spread it around a little bit. Now we're going to season it with salt and pepper. Timid because I can be like salt happy because I try to get a lot of sodium in my diet, you know, but. Yep. So I'll, like a lot of my food is probably tastes like a fucking salt bomb, but. Uh, we're gonna get along just fine. And then, you know, like when people talk about electrolytes and stuff like that, sodium, dude, sodium. If you, oh shoot. Um, You're good, I like pepper too. Yeah, yeah, in fitness, if you, learn, if you learn how to master and manipulate carbohydrates and sodium, things change. All right, I think you're, I think yeah. you're actually good to go on, go on the plate with the rest of that. Oh, dude, and then just pour all the juice on there and everything. Yeah, yeah go oh, for it. Yeah. 
because the juice is actually, as yeah. it sits, it's going to reabsorb a little bit. Yeah. So it's not going to be like a juicy mess. It's really going to be yeah. like a beautiful, beautiful thing finished. Yeah, that's going to be good. I'm getting hungry. Let's wrap it up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. <laughs> All right, so we're going to build our wraps here. This is still pretty hot. And you could add whatever toppings you want, like if you're a ketchup person or something like that. Huh? You could use ketchup. In this case, I like mayonnaise. I like pickles on mine, so that's what I'm going to do on mine. So I'm going to go in for me with a little bit of mayonnaise. You a mayonnaise guy or no? Uh, yeah, I mean, it tastes good. I don't, yeah, fuck yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean. I mean, like, dude, I'm, 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 I'm watering at the mouth here. Like, don't ask me, to, <laughs> don't ask me questions. I'm watching and yeah. Uh, if you want to be macro friendly, use a low carb wrap and don't put fucking mayonnaise on it. I'm gonna go in with my pickles. These seem like, these look like the pickles my grandma used to make. She would have like jars of pickled, like they like pickled cucumbers. All pickles are cucumbers, right? Correct, yep. But then there's like processes that make these look like a little bit fresher, not like your yep. typical pickle or something like that. So I love buying my pickles in the refrigerator section, not in the, the regular grocery aisles, because I just feel like they're lighter, fresher, uh, they just have better flavor. So we're gonna go in now with our steak meat. We get some of our onions and garlic in there too. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna sprinkle on our cheese here. You use whatever cheese you want. If you're a provolone person, you can do that. Uh, this is a little bit of Cheddar Jack blend. What would be the best cheese for the, what's, cause provolone so is a good. So in Philly they use Wiz, but I like, uh, I actually like provolone. Okay, yeah. I'm a big provolone cheese guy too. That shit is good as fuck, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a wrap and get it kind of towards the back here. Fold up the sides first, and then from the back to the front. All right, so we got a nice little wrap there. We're gonna bring it over to our pan. Now our pan has a little bit of olive oil, like residual in it. So we're just gonna put it in here. Oh, he's gonna crust it up, dude. That's like, what? They're just gonna call this an American burrito. Like we're learning how to make American burritos today. Look at that thing. All right, so we're gonna take this bad boy over here. We're gonna go ahead and give it a little slice. Man, oh, juicy, yeah. delicious. Look at that. Yeah, you're competing, so I'm gonna eat. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna eat without you. Well, I'm telling you. Yeah, dude, that's like, so that's the, I, would, I would classify this as like a good healthy meal, you know, like my diet discipline right now is like 100%, but you don't need to be 100% like that. But I would cut, like you could eat, like I would put this under a healthy meal. Like that would, yeah, like. And you not, can do everything in this if you're like doing, doing like a kind of a low carb thing or whatever. Yeah. You do everything in this over, over lettuce, or if you just like don't like, like the pre-made carb or whatever, like a little bit of rice, do a yeah. rice bowl with it. Still gonna be delicious. It's gonna be great. It's gonna fit into your macros. That is damn good. Yeah, making meat like that won't do, yeah. So folks, make sure that if you like this, you like us, make sure you like, subscribe, follow, and hit the bell for notifications. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Next time on Fail Proof Kitchen. <laughs> We're gonna do a little bit of ghoul soul stealing pizza. We're gonna do some freaky Friday eggs and some mummy dogs. Oh, it's God. good. I like this.